Triangles in photography. Triangles are really important in photography. They can absolutely change the game for you in so many ways. And in this video, I'm gonna break down three of them for you that will make you a better photographer. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. You can hear a garbage truck outside my house. That's great timing for this video. Uh, I've been a professional photographer since 2010. I'm based in Silicon Valley, California, and I also teach photography, hence this channel. Uh, one of the things that I love the most about photography is the rules of the game. And one thing I learned from, I don't know, just years of practice, trial and error, is that once you understand the rules, you can know how to break them, but they, they give you direction, they give you freedom. And that was the thing I didn't understand really until Jocko Willink wrote his book, Extreme Ownership whole other topic of conversation there. But once you know the rules, you have freedom to work within those rules. Think of a coloring book. You have the lines on the page already. If you want that grass to be green, cool. If you want it to be purple, awesome. You want to give it stripes, fantastic. The grass will still be the grass. That is the same with using triangles and any of the other rules of photography. The rules are there for you and you can use them to your own advantage once you get the hang of that down. So I'm gonna break down three different ways you can use triangles to up your photography game. That's gonna be in posing, in composition, and exposure. So let's look at posing first. So here is one of my favorite photos that I've taken recently and it's full of triangles. See if you can spot a few of them before I show you where they are. The magic of posing is creating triangles. They're just aesthetically pleasing. That's how our brains as humans work, especially when directing the mood and the feel of an image. When we want a more strong, powerful, masculine energy, we have hard vertical and horizontal lines. If we want more graceful, elegant, feminine lines, then they are curves and they are diagonal. Again, that is just how our brains read images, whether it's something in nature, if it's a piece of art, it doesn't matter. That is how our brains process geometry. So in this photo, here are the different triangles. The overall pose is a triangle. The arm over the face is a triangle. The other arm and the way her lower body is positioned forms a triangle. You could even say uh, from her booty to her toes to her knees is another triangle. From her bust line to her shoulders forms another triangle, right? The, the deep V of the underwear, the back of her thong, the front of her underwear, triangles everywhere. And that's not a coincidence. There's a reason we don't have square bikini tops. They're not as aesthetically pleasing as triangles. Fashion designers know this, artists know this, and now you do as well. So when we put people into poses, if you have them standing upright, this is a strong, powerful, more masculine pose. Can you have women do it? Absolutely. But again, it creates that strong, powerful, masculine energy. If you have curves and diagonal lines like we see in here, then it's a more elegant, graceful, feminine energy. So you can use both of those things to your advantage when deciding how to pose your clients. So when I put people into poses, I start at the legs and I work my way up. The reason you can bend a leg is to create a triangle and you can bend arms, put hands on hips, all these different ways to create triangles. So think of that next time you're posing your subjects, start by just creating triangles and see how aesthetically pleasing the photo becomes. All right, here is another example of posing with triangles. See how many you can spot in this one before I give you another overlay. So these are just some of them. The overall pose is a triangle. It's wider at the bottom, it tapers up toward the top. We have the arm by her face is a triangle, the other arm on her hip is a triangle. There are other ones in this image, but it would look like a chaotic mess of lines if I drew all of them in here. I mean, even on her neck, right? Her chin to her ear to uh, the center of her collarbone here all a triangle. There's triangles everywhere in this photo. One of the reasons it's so aesthetically pleasing. If her arms were straight down, if they were out to the side, well, she'd look like a scarecrow, but it wouldn't have the same soft, feminine, elegant feel in our 
brains. We just wouldn't read it that way. And instead, we have diagonal lines and curves, and those are more feminine and aesthetically pleasing in this sort of photography. All right, one of the other ways that we use triangles is the exposure triangle. Now, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO are all entirely different functions within your camera. Your shutter speed is how long your sensor is exposed to light. Your aperture is how large the opening is inside of your lens, and your ISO is how sensitive the image sensor is to light. Now, we know ISO also controls grain, shutter speed controls motion, and aperture controls your depth of field. But when you line up all three of these in a certain way, you get proper exposure. And you can raise one and lower another by the same increments to maintain the same exposure. That's why we call it an exposure triangle. There are three separate functions, but if you adjust two of them in proportionate opposite directions, meaning let's say you go up one full stop of ISO and you close your aperture down one full stop, your exposure stays the same. That is how they're linked in the triangle. So those three things control your exposure. And we have shutter priority, we have aperture priority, maybe the amount of grain in the photo is actually what you are concerned most with. You're shooting products, for example, and you have flexibility with shutter speed and aperture. So choose the one that is most important to you and then adjust the other ones in order of importance. Let's say you're photographing a race car that is going really fast. You need shutter speed. You need a fast shutter speed to not have a blurry photo. And maybe you wanna keep a shallow depth of field as well and ISO is your least of the concerns. And your ISO is lowest on the priority. So you'd set your shutter speed first, then your aperture, and then your ISO to give you proper exposure. Maybe you're doing portraits and you want a really shallow depth of field. So you open your aperture wide. Well, now there's too much light coming in. So you speed up your shutter speed, but it's still not quite right. Now you can adjust your ISO, to give you proper exposure. And that is how the exposure triangle came into existence. All right, now let's talk about composition. We know that triangles are there in posing to make the image more aesthetically pleasing. It can be the same in composition. So you can use elements beyond just your primary subject, probably the person you are photographing, to create triangles. And those will guide your eyes around. So in this photo, for example, uh, we have triangles here at the arms. You go elbows to the top of the head. She makes a triangle here, but you also have this sheet pulled up into a triangle, which guides your eyes up into the face of the subject. And she's looking down her shoulder, which brings you across to here, and the lines bring you back up to the face. So leading lines can guide you around the triangle. But again, the magic here is the flow of the sheet. Uh, it's the old perspective of railroad tracks going off into the distance um, or power lines. There's a ton of different ways that we can use elements in the image in triangles to guide the eyeballs of our viewer. Because we notice the brightest thing first, the highest contrast, and the sharpest focus. That's just how our brains work. It's a survival technique that we are born with in order to spot threats in the wild. So we could look around the plains or the woods and identify if there is uh, a predator out there trying to eat us. We're born with that. It's part of being human. So it's why we are drawn to those sorts of things in art, because our brains like being able to identify those sorts of patterns. Use them to your advantage in your photography. So again, uh, pulling the sheet up is a great way to do it. If you have flowy fabric behind somebody, if you position them in you know, the middle of a street and you have the, line, the yellow line at the middle of the street, the sidewalks pointing in, the slope of the buildings coming in toward the center, you have all of these triangles at your disposal anywhere you go, or you can create them like in this scenario to add a more aesthetically pleasing element to your photos. So there you go. That's how to use triangles in your images. And it may not be a triangle, but there's a fourth way to improve your photography, and that is to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any more of these insanely helpful videos 
to move you along the path of becoming a better photographer and making some money with that camera. So if you wanna know more about composition and taking pictures of humans who would love to pay you, head to boudoirguild.com and you can check out the posing course that I have over there, where I walk you step by step on how I do all the top poses that make me multiple six figures as a boudoir photographer. You can do the same. And if you have any questions about any of this, drop them in the comments below. I am happy to help. You are amazing. We'll see you inside.